Hey, good morning, everybody. It's time now for Putnam County Today here on 94.3 WREB from the Purdue Extension here in Putnam County. Mark Evans joins us. Mark, seems like we just got over the fair, but it's time to start planning for next year, right? It is time to start again, John. Uh, you know, actually, uh, last year our 4-H enrollment uh, window came a lot earlier and we right. have a new uh, system to enroll and so forth. And but that's uh, it's nothing changed this year. It's pretty, and I think the thing that folks will find nicer, particularly if they were with it last year, was all that information they entered last year is already in there. So, that's awesome. And it'll be your second time, so it'll be a lot easier for you. So anyway, hopefully a lot easier for us too. But it actually went really well last year, especially right. the new system was very helpful with communications and our animal entry and so forth was very went very well. All right, and I think people are under the misconception still to this day that you have to be a farm kid to be in 4-H, but you don't, right? I am so glad you brought that up because, uh, you know, there's a lot of folks that, oh, I can't be in 4-H, I don't live on a farm, I don't have farm animals, and actually more of our projects are not related uh, to farm animals or anything than, than ours. So actually we've got about 10 projects that, are, that you could really say are directly farm related. Right. So out of our about 75 plus. So in fact, this year uh, we're adding uh, three new projects. One of those is Legos. Oh. And it's before folks could do Legos, but it's kind of one of the craft uh, exhibits. Right. And this year we thought we'd kind of separate those out and, and uh, make them so they're their own, so they're kind of competing against one another instead of things that are totally different. And then uh, we're going to try, a, it's, I don't know if we'll continue this ongoing or not, but you know, uh, India's got an important birthday next year. That's right. 200 years will be on in, sometime in December, 1816. Right. I can't remember exactly the date. But anyway, um, we're going to have a project, uh, it'll be a, a history project, and uh, folks can. Uh, we've got they'll have that all written up yet how we're going to do that but we're going to have some opportunities for folks to hopefully uh, showcase Indiana's 200th birthday next year or bicentennial that'd be awesome so we're really looking forward to that so uh, anyway that's uh, some new things that we'll have going for next year and um, you know, the other thing I just want to say next week uh, after fall break uh, we're going to be heading out to schools for those that are in grades Three in particular, we're going to be, uh, so things will be going home and hopefully in your uh, students folder at some point. And we'll be doing a little school business next week at most of our county schools in terms of the grade three. So. All right. And what are my folks, the ages, and of course, want to big, put a big plug in for Mini 4-H. Yeah, uh, Mini 4-H, which is, uh, we call Exploring 4-H, but uh, actually we'll uh, do school visits for that a little later, probably in uh, December or January. And uh, Mini 4-H or Exploring 4-H is second grade. And uh, regular, this 4-H is grades three through 12. It goes by grade. So okay. if you're in grades three through 12, and, and if you didn't start when you are in third grade, that's fine. We actually have several kids that have acquired this year that's in grade 10, and they really like what they see with archery and so forth. Sure. And so they, sign, they say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna learn a lot about archery. So they sign it. You know, and I, you know, maybe that's a good thing to point out here. You know, 4-H, some people may not even know what it is or right. why you even get into it. And frankly, 4-H is a, it's a, it's a, it's the nation's largest uh, organized youth organization that there is. And um, in fact, it's uh, sponsored by the USDA and the 4-H seal has the same protection as the seal of the president of the United States. Right. So that's a pretty cool thing. But anyway, it's basically a lifelong learning, uh, career learning opportunities for youth that are in our case in Indiana, grades three through 12. And you know, I think a lot of people don't understand, 4-H helps open doors for you later in life. Um, you know, we talk about the 4-H scholarships that they give away. Um, but you know, it, if you've been in 4-H with somebody who else has been in 4-H, you've kind of got that common bond. Everybody's went through that week of the fair together, you know. Well, you know, there's one thing that I hear employers time and time again saying, if I have a, uh, several applicants and one of them has been a 10 year, uh, not 10 year, but 10 year, as in uh, right. 10 years of your life, have, I've invested and committed into 4-H, I'm going to go with that person because that shows me commitment. That's right, and uh, and I and and that really just tells me a lot about that person. And I think you have to go back on the work ethic too, um, because you know you have to work at 4-H. It just doesn't happen for you. Yeah, and, you know we, uh, you know that's one thing we stress all the time. You know, parents sometimes will try to do their kids' 4-H projects or 
help out maybe a little more than they should in some cases. I don't think that happens as much as sometimes what people say. But right. um, frankly, uh, you're like cheating the, the, the youth out of the opportunity That's right. when you do that. The parents are hurting youth. The youth is you know aren't gaining anything by that. In fact, it's hurting them. So uh, you know we really you know we are we really stress that and, and 4-H is about the youth getting hands-on learning experience. And you know, yeah, it started in the rural area, but so much now it's changed. And uh, in fact, anybody in the city can be a part of it. Yeah, we talked, I said we had three uh, projects earlier. The third one that I didn't mention, which we have competed in for the first time is robotics. Uh, oh yeah. We have been very blessed. Uh, we had some donations into the, the year last year and we got started with a robotics program using the Lego robotics. And then, uh, Thanks to Duke Energy, there was another gr uh, great opportunity through the campus and several counties in the state, us being one of them, uh, where it was able to receive several more kits. We actually have 11 uh, robotics kits now, so we're wow. going to be utilizing those in some school classrooms, but also utilizing those in terms of, from uh, the, in September, there's this uh, competition that occurred, and we took uh, six youth this year. It's first time, it's actually only the third time this competition has occurred, but this year we took uh, six youth and learned a lot. Uh, yeah. Learned, kind of, we're ready to go again next year, but they all had a blast, and it was really fun to watch them problem solve, and uh, basically they had challenges like, uh, they would have a square box, and there'd be uh, different types of uh, food that you might eat, and they had the, like the My Plate right. uh, deal as far as uh, healthy food choices. They had to move the foods into the plate in the right spot in the box. That was oh. one of the challenges with their little robot. So that's pretty cool. Well, and you know, I think kids they can gain so much, you know, being in 4-H, and uh, you know, it, it's one of those things. You know, my background was in farming and 4-H, and you, you don't forget the friendships you create in those 4-H clubs. Yeah, and I don't mean to minimize the ag side of it all. In right. fact, you know, uh, my son had, takes three animal projects and, uh, you know, it's uh, good for him to learn that I got to get out and get out there every day and yeah. water those guys. So, uh, I mean, that right there is a good uh, example of learning some responsibility. So. That's right. Well, Mark, how can people find out more about, uh, you know, 4-H and how they can become a part of it? You can uh, go visit our website. It's uh, extension.purdue.edu slash forward slash Putnam. Uh, if you just leave the Putnam off, you'll get uh, the whole the general extension. You can go to county offices and select Putnam. But if you do extension.purdue, P-U-R-D-U-E dot E-D-U, and then forward slash Putnam, uh, that will take you to our county website. And uh, we have a quick links thing on that mm -hmm. page and you can go there and there's a spot to do 4-H enrollment so all right well it sounds great mark we look forward to having you back throughout the year and if you ever have problems with that it should go really smooth but for some reason you're pulling your hair out don't get frustrated call us we'll be glad to walk what's through that it. number and that's 653-8411 653-8411 well mark thanks so much for being with us always a joy to have you in here Appreciate it. Thanks, John. All right. Don't forget, if you're a nonprofit group or community organization, you'd like some free airtime here on WREB, you too can be a part of Putnam County today. Give us a call at 653-9717.